first of all, congratulations. This is phenomenal that you're here. I felt the theme of, of magic in the shorts from perhaps a Magic the Gatherer, as like, I'm a big magic nerd, yes. so like I saw a little bit of that in okay, there. Good, awesome. um, slumber Party, the magic of a slumber party. Um, it, it, there's also like the, the magic of memory in the spelling. I guess I throw it out to the group, if magic featured in your short, where did that magic come from? What inspired you? And, and kind of how did you interpret that magic system in animation? And then anybody can answer when they're ready. Does the magic of showbiz count? <laughs> the magic of showbiz always counts. Uh, I like anime. For me? <laughs> uh, animation's cool because you can literally do whatever you want. And I had a, a tough time explaining this to my parents who are somewhat creative in their own ways. Um, like my dad really wanted me to try live action once. Uh, and I told him like, it doesn't work that way. Like the ideas I have don't work that way. And then he saw uh, that the Everything's Okay show and he's like, okay, I get it. <laughs> so that's sort of how it works in, in my film. But I love to see how the, like the wide variety in ways that people interpret it in their own way. Because, you know, it's just like an infinite medium. It's awesome. Anyone want this thing? Here, it's for you. <laughs> Thank you. A gift. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, to go off your point, I feel like animators are people who love to just, like, imagine anything happening. So it makes sense to me that all of us, like, really like media or things with themes where anything can happen, like magical stuff. Um, I know I, like, really like... Uh, fantasy media of all kinds. I forget who it was. I think it was yours had like Nad Pod mentioned. Yeah. The possum was based off of a character from Nad Pod, which is like a fantasy uh, show. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So I feel like it makes sense that like a bunch of people who like very creative and magical things all are drawn to that kind of thing. Somebody else go next. <laughs> Anyone else want to talk about the magic in their short or uh, just the magic trick of making something move in general? No? Yeah. I'll go. yeah. I mean, you were right on the money. It was directly inspired by Magic the Gathering. Because I, <laughs> funnily enough, I met, so NADPOD is a D&D &D thing, live show. I met somebody at a NADPOD live show who taught me how to play Magic the Gathering, which is the nerdiest thing ever. Um, <laughs> And then I was like, I want to make a film about this because I can hyper fixate on it and not get bored of it. And I think that's magical. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. What, um, when you thought about staging something like a card game in animation, I mean, you did so much really cool stuff with casting spells. There was some amazing sort of like Yu-Gi-Oh card floating in air stuff <laughs> happening. Thank you. Um, how, like, where did you begin in the boarding process? What inspired you as you kind of elevated a game that is usually in, in two dimensions, unless you have some Doritos. But. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, a lot of video games. Like, I, I watched my brother play a lot of video games growing up, and there's, like, really great staging for, like, um, like the 3D RPGs. Um, like, oh, what's... Kingdom Hearts. I watch him play a lot of Kingdom Hearts, and the cutscenes are, like, really dynamic. Um, and also, like, the sometimes I would do, like, like rotational pans reminiscent of like a Pokemon, like when they slide in, like slide sideways. Um, so lots of video game. I'm sorry, this is like the nerdiest answer ever. <laughs> but yeah, like all, all media like kind of ties back into like making it more dimensional. Um, yeah. Um, so considering that this is Pride Eve, um, I wanted to ask um, a question for anyone about uh, queer and trans themes. Um, we've seen a lesbian meet cute. Uh, we've seen uh, coming to terms very suddenly about identity. Um, and uh, I want to know what do you want to see more of when it comes to uh, queer and trans representations in animation? Thank you so much. Um, I hope I can do my partner justice in this answer. Um, 
as I've been with him like for the past year and I worked very closely with him on Ode to Onions and like really saw like how his experience of being transgender like really unfolded in real time. So with Ode to Onions, like it opened up a very unique experience. A lot of queer and people who are going through transitioning um, go through, which is that kind of like, oh my God moment that like, oh my God, I'm I'm in the wrong body. This is so wrong, but it feels so right. Like, what, what do I do kind of thing? And um, it is truly like so insane, but like just, it, I, I can't imagine what people have to go through with that. But I think opening up that conversation and like having more media, like talk about the uncomfortable things for uh, people who have to go through this. I, I think it's so special and I, feel like everyone deserves to share their story just like my partner did for this film. I can do it. Oh sure. Okay. Um hmm. So uh, I like rom-coms and I like cheesy things and I like kiss in the rain endings because they make me feel good. Um, and I think they make a lot of people feel good. And in a lot of this media, it's always, um, well, not always, primarily heterosexual. And I found that a lot of it takes place in high school, which I feel like a lot of queer kids, we don't necessarily get the chance to explore these things in high school. So it happens later on. That's why my film was um, pretty intentionally set um, on a college campus. Because, you know, a lot of us don't have the, the space or the luxury to to explore these kinds of things. And, you know, you see it on TV, you see people um, having sex and kissing and going to parties. And then you feel like I'm behind, but you're not behind. Um, and I feel like we need more media that explores that. And also just more um, sappy, kiss in the rain, queer um, media. Because I don't think everything has to be about our tragedies, you know. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, we also saw a lot of, uh, of shorts, um, featuring memories and exploring, uh, the concept of memories. And, um, oftentimes on screen, we saw them in a different animated style or, um, or, uh, in an abstract format. Um, does anyone have anything to say about how you explored that in your process? Um, my film is about going on the bus in middle school because I went on the bus until I was a senior in high school because I never got my driver's license. And um, I'm not humiliated about it at all because it's more sustainable that way. But um, I was a very like pent up, uh, angry child that was like, oh, my God, the world is so bad and everyone hates me. And I carried that feeling with me like so heavily throughout um, most of my life. And I was very heavily bullied. Um, and a lot of those characters in my film were based off of real people that I knew that had real tragedies in their own lives. Um, so a lot of that was processing my own memories of my youth and also reconciling with like forgiving people at the same time and trying to overcome a lot of those feelings. So it was a very big processing thing and the whole thing was a memory in a way. Yeah. Was that process cathartic or? Yeah. It felt good to make it and put it out there. And I actually, um, uh, after I graduated my high school, they started having an animation class. And I actually went there last week, and they screened it. And um, a lot of the kids after spoke to me. And it was really cathartic uh, to hear them. And they they were like, oh my god, this is so cool. And I, made, I was like, I made this because I felt so alone. And I'm so glad that it could make you feel less alone, because that is exactly what I wanted it to do. And it's for you. So. Um, the film The Creek um, has a lot to do with, with memory, and, and I saw it was dedicated um, at the end. Do you want to talk a little bit about where that came from? Yeah, so this um, film is actually dedicated to my friend who's in the audience right now. Hello. <laughs> um, so that's Seneca. We go way back, as far back as kindergarten. Um, I unfortunately, in 
eighth grade had to move away. And um, this film was kind of dedicated to just, I guess, who I am now versus who I was when I was there at the creek with my friend. Um, I, I remember like, the the story I kind of made on a whim, I just wanted to express the feeling that comes with moving away um, from somewhere that you are used to and that you love. Um, and then kind of taking that journey of realizing that it's not the place, it's the people that you're with. Um, it's, you know, it's not about refilling the creek It's if it's empty. It's not about like literally getting that water back. It's about the boats that you made with your friends. It's about the time that you spent. Um, and going back on kind of a previous question um, with like magic in animation, um, I kind of also included some magic like with the water coming back um, at the end just to kind of express like, it's a feeling that's beyond literal when you share S like an experience with someone um, somewhere and that place can represent how you feel just about the people that you're with this, this is a very sappy answer I'm sorry <laughs> but um, yeah I it's a yeah. very compelling metaphor um, and it felt you know the, the so elemental you know it's something that i think a lot of us can identify with is uh bringing up these childhood memories um and seeing how we can best express them so that under other people can understand and relate uh to what we felt it's like what you were saying with in the interim um you know it's all about expression and communication and relation to others um and Mia, I want to ask you about Slumber Party. Zuzu is the name of the demon? Yeah. So just um, in thinking about childhood memories, where the hell did Zuzu come from? I <laughs> don't know. Um, I don't know. I was When I was first reading my script, it was like a kind of a tight deadline, and I just put that in as like a temporary name. And so Ruth was my writing mentor helper. We met working on a PBS kids show together, and she's wonderful. So of course I wanted to you know, keep asking her questions about her work because she's such a good writer. And... Yeah, I don't know. After my first draft, I sent it to Ruth. I was like, this is just a temp name. This is just, you know, like a stupid thing. And Ruth was like, no, this is amazing. Keep it. Um, and so it just kind of stayed because, I don't know, kids come up with funny names. I, um, My two voice actors are my little cousin and the girl next door who I babysit. Um, and, of course, I named Ruth after Ruth. And I don't know. It's just there's so many, like, silly little girls in my life. And I love them so much. And I love the creepy things that they love and the weird things they come up with. And I just... Yeah, I love seeing the things they make and do, and it was just kind of about that, and yeah. It was beautifully cast and beautifully performed. Thank you. They um, did such a good job. I'm so proud. The great. younger one, um, I got to her house. I was like, all right, so we're going to read this thing, and I handed it to her, and she was like, I can't read. And I was like, <laughs> oh, right, okay. So, so I, had to, I had to deliver it to her line by line. She did a really good job. I'm really proud of her. She can read now. She's seven. I'm proud of her. She's growing up. It's crazy. Can you talk about the design and animation of Zuzu? As a yeah. collage is really cool. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, for that, I was just, I don't know, I was thinking about that stage between, like, being a kid and being a teenager and just, like, the weird angstiness of it. And I don't know, at that time, I was definitely, like, very into, like, teen magazines. And I was like, what is it supposed to be like to be a teenage girl? What am I supposed to look like? What and so I kind of based it on those. I found a bunch of... Um, scanned in early 2000s teen magazines and like cut out things from them and animated that to make like a monster out of that like scariness of growing up um yeah and i yeah that's awesome thank you and in the end it's just it's nothing to be scared of it's yeah it's not that bad it's a yeah it's a floofy <laughs> dog full of self-care <laughs> things yeah when i first heard that i was like this is too stupid ruth and she was like no keep <laughs> it i'm like oh good I would never say yeah is too stupid. no you were yeah. very right I'm my, my uh, philosophy is go for the stupid, go for the silly. Yeah, yeah. Think thank you, it. Ruth. <laughs> no, no Ruth really helped stupid. so much. Mm -hmm. Like, I really owe you so much for it. It was amazing. <laughs> Your help was incredible. Yeah, you're awesome. You're awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I also wanted to, um, going into um, mixed animation styles, uh, Zola, I wanted to ask you about uh, your style as well and how you made those uh, the choices. 
um, to uh, to mix things up with the actual human hand uh, that interacted with the characters on screen. So yeah, I'm a big fan of um, classic animation, and uh, Max Fleischer has this series called uh, Out of the Inkwell, where he would interact with the characters, and I always found that really, really fun. And I wanted to somehow incorporate that into my work too, because it's the whole movie is kind of a homage to old animation. So I was like, let's see how much fun I can have with this. Let me like put my own hands into it. So that was fun. I also tried to replicate this thing they used to do where. They would use maquettes, like real life models for the backgrounds. And I don't have any space for that because I'm in the dorm room. So I had to learn Blender, which was really fun. Uh, so uh, mixing Blender and mixing kind of more cell animation, that was really fun. Uh, I do like working with mixed media. So yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about the 2D pipeline and how you integrated Blender? Mm. So my pipeline is absolutely terrible. Uh, because I go from Procreate to uh, Clip Studio to Blender um, and then to After Effects. So that's why I usually, <laughs> I, I, I should standardize it. I should standardize it for the next projects. But yeah, um, to the animation, I feel like uh, why I use Procreate is because it has so much limitations and I feel like it prevents me from doing shortcuts that I would do uh, in like a more advanced program. Um, but aside from that, I've been getting used to uh, Toon Boom Harmony, and that has really nice bells and whistles, which I've been enjoying. So, yeah. What do we have next? Any more process questions? Um, yeah, we can skip ahead. Yeah. Um, doodly doo. <laughs> um, what existing work? inspires you like what are you putting in your eyes and ears now or in the past that like i was just gonna say because uh you're wearing what is amazingly a neon genesis evangelion shirt <laughs> despite everything <laughs> and uh there's like i mean there's one pretty obvious evo reference in the everything is okay show but if you look pretty hard there's like five um but i'm not saying what they are uh a lot yeah exactly now you know uh, they could be anywhere uh, let's see uh late night talk shows as a whole but also weirdly enough some madoka magica uh there was actually a whole scene that i cut out that was um gonna be a bit more of like what was past the set of the show, which was going to be a whole lot more like, you know, paint on glass and cool mixed media stuff. But of course, uh, time constraints got the best of me. Um, but yeah, those were those were my big ones. That's kind of all I had to say. I just had to bring up the Eva stuff because of that shirt. <laughs> See if someone can go next. If you want. I have one. Yeah. Uh, very specifically, I've always been really fascinated and into um, Canadian cartoons from like 2008 um, that are all done by like the same studio and so I'll like go down deep rabbit holes of looking at production materials and design materials from that for like the past 10 years so that like heavily inspires like everything I do <laughs> and that's it <laughs> yes total drama and clone high and like garage band and like stuff like sidekick like quite literally just like the stuff that would play when you got home at 3 p.m. Because I would take the bus and then I would go home and then I would watch cartoons. So. Amazing pilot. It's just, I've seen it before because I worked at the studio on a project, but Mercury Filmworks in Ottawa did a pilot for like a heavy metal show that is like that style. Like oh, the one that leaked from like 2012? Yes. yes, I did see that and it looked beautiful. Yeah, really <laughs> like super like angular style. And like yeah. I really like Mercury film work, so yeah. Who else has inspiration? Pass that down. Thank you. I could definitely talk about like Archer's inspirations uh, because he has this very beautiful and unique style that I haven't seen in so long, especially like nowadays in this generation and everything. But 
his style is very reminiscent of like um old like hand-drawn animations like who framed roger rabbit or like the iron giant and just the way that i've seen him rough animate like I've seen him geek out about like Glenn Keane's like Tarzan rough animation sketches and we always are just like oh my god they're so beautiful they're so beautiful and I feel like he could like easily replicate that and it really like just shows no onions in my opinion but where I come in as a compositor when I was given these beautiful shots to um, composite I, I feel like my editing style kind of um, is reminiscent to a lot of like early 2010s like a lot of music videos and stuff like that so to encapsulate those intense feelings I really looked back at like a lot of old gritty like music videos and like kind of tried to match the style to it but also like really bring in those like powerful and intense feelings to the film all right <clears throat> so um, we, I'm sure we've all been hearing about uh, how things are feeling very shaky in the animation industry right now, but I believe that that means that it is indie animation's time to shine. I am personally branding this year as the year of make it anyway, um, do it anyway, put it out, see what happens. Um, so how do you as independent uh, artists and filmmakers get your uh, get your works out into the world. Oh, sorry. Here you go. Um. <laughs> so, um, Lovey Dovey was my thesis film, and I was very very fortunate that it was um, chosen for the best of the uh, DDA at Pratt. That's the Department of Digital Arts. Um, and then that was the first time I saw it on like a big screen and like the feeling of like hearing people laugh and like hearing people oh <laughs> like that was just like so awesome like that was so cool that was like my favorite feeling in the world um, and so I started submitting to a lot of film festivals and I've gone into a bunch um, <laughs> um and then just so that film festivals um finding people who like your niche um i found works um finding people who can relate to your work finding people who like want to take the time to like you know just care about it um i don't like social media so not really so much social media only when i have to um, I like like in-person events, things like this. It's like I feel like nowadays like everything is so digital. So having something like live, like like tangible is just like really important to me. So like things like this. Uh, I hate to be that guy, but I started an indie studio. Um, <laughs> uh, I was just like talking to my friends and I was like, uh, I don't think anyone's getting employed right now anywhere you guys want to set up an LLC so we can take up freelance work as a group? And we did. And then I was like, you know what? I make TikToks. Why don't I make a TikTok for the studio? And we posted it online at 4 p.m. on Wednesday. And bef we posted it and left to get groceries. And we hit 10,000 followers before we left Walmart. <laughs> And now it's my job to make three videos a week, and I also hate social media. <laughs> I, I don't want to say that social media is the way to do it from now on, because that would suck. But um, I, I seriously do think the way is just like getting yourself out there um, and talking to people and showing stuff, um, especially at animation like festivals and networks. Like I have legit networked like on accident i was like i was at taffy like a couple weeks ago and like i was i just went to have like lunch with some people and then i found out like all of them had just graduated like sheridan and y'all know how cracked sheridan is so i was like oh my god wait all of you guys are working at companies like with jobs um so as far as the hashtag indie animation indie revolution indie cartoon uh stuff 
just make it anyways. But also, it's totally fine if you have to have like a side job or you're not going to make all the money from your life from your cartoon because god knows animation is like the least profitable business maybe <laughs> ever the indie side um and yeah good luck but go for the stupid i love that go for the go for the freaking stupid <laughs> get that but get that truck to hit that guy yeah. i can talk about it a little Hell bit yeah. um i love uh indie animation it's like my whole my whole thing, my favorite thing. Um, and I'm very fortunate to have a lot of friends that listen to me complain and help me and look at my really bad scripts and give me notes and do it just for fun. I work two jobs on top of doing independent work. Um, so I feel really spread thin a lot of the time, but um, I wouldn't be like able to do what I am right now uh, without uh, the communities that I've met in New York City specifically. Uh, I started going to these things called Big Milk a few years ago, and that's actually how I met my first manager who gave me my first job out of college, because um, we literally just kept on running into each other. Big Milk, animation block party, uh, uh, something, oh, club video show. And uh, so there's all of these things where people will go and read their work and do things. And it's about, um, it's not really about like, oh, who did you work on this? Did you? It's just about like enjoying art and being in a place and having a couple of drinks and being chill and being a chiller. And that is my favorite part about indie animation. Um, and because it just makes me happy. And I'm happy that I have friends that I'll be like, Mike, can you read this? And he'll be like, it's so bad. And I go, <laughs> I love you. Thank you for telling me that. Because sometimes people don't tell you. And um, I appreciate it. And that's why I love it so much. And I feel at home there. Um, this is a question that goes out to everybody. And maybe I want everybody to answer. So I'm going to pass this along. Um, what's next for you? What are you excited about? Do you have another project? Is, what do you want to do with the, the work that you've just completed and submitted? But yeah, what's next? What are you excited about? Um, I don't know. Animation wise, like I've been working this year, I've been doing stuff. But thesis, it, that film that you guys just saw took so much of my time and my energy. And I'm just trying to like be a person again, as hard as that is sometimes. Um, right now, my big project is I'm working on a Google map of every bodega cat in the city so I could find them. And I'm putting like rankings and photos. So if anyone has good bodega cats to add, let me know. Um, but yeah, I'm also working. But I don't know. More importantly, I'm just trying to like find the things about art that bring me joy and go draw for fun and do what I love again. Because I don't know. These, like working on this film, there's a lot of great things in it, but there were definitely moments that made me a little miserable. And it's, <laughs> you know, that's part of work. When you do what you love, it's easy to get sick of it. So, you know, taking care of myself and figuring it out is kind of important to me right now. Uh, I'm going to say the exact same thing that Mia <laughs> said. <laughs> no, seriously, like, um, yeah, making a film is, is hard, but it's, it's fun, but it's hard. Um, and I also don't know what comes next. Um, similarly, I'm I'm just working freelancing, um, and then just taking breaks, trying to relax when I can, but also spend time with friends and do things that bring me joy, like playing Magic the Gathering. Sometimes it doesn't bring me joy because it's because <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> but um, no, yeah. Um, I I also don't know what's what's next. I I feel like I have an intuition that it's gonna it's all gonna be okay um even though it's a little stressful right now but um yeah I'm just excited to uh be around such like really awesome filmmaker ma filmmakers that are like really inspiring and will hopefully like just like that environment will give me more motivation to work when I'm ready to dip my toes back into my next creative project but yeah looking forward to the cat Bodega spreadsheet. Seriously, you have any I will. I will. I missed it. I was no. just a minute too late. I want to see. They I did, they did a, one of their really nice. was a bodega cat. Oh, so. oh, that's it's my favorite it. creature. <laughs> <laughs> it's a distinct species. Yeah. It, and it was their answer to the name the unsung heroes of New York City. Oh my yeah. I'm so bodega sad cat. I missed that one. Oh. 
Oh, you. Um, so I, I, f- I finished that film about two years ago at this point. So, and for the past two years, artistically, I was hibernating because that took up so <laughs> much and it sucked making it, but it was also super awesome. Um, so, sorry, my watch was going off. Um, I just started making my, well, I just started pre-production for my sophomore film which I'm super super excited about because these past couple years I've been just like working and trying to like rest up and like get my groove back um so my day job I work full-time um as an editor and videographer for an advertising agency in Jersey um and it's nice not working in animation because um I'm still being like creative but it's not like sucking up all of like my 2d drawing skills so i still have some of that left when i get home which is nice um so yeah i'm starting my second film soon and it's gonna have similar queer themes and it's about um a filmmaker and a ballerina um (laughs) i am working on a 20 page comic about uh smoking weed and misogyny in 2018 Mm -hmm. uh and um another true story and uh, I'm, I play GeoGuessr with my girlfriend, and um, I'm working on a, uh, I'm starting to get the ball rolling on another film about um, a mad chase with a girl and her little alien. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, straight up, I've been getting into baking recently. <laughs> My boyfriend got me like a huge uh, Dutch oven uh, for my birthday and you can make like uh, big artisan loaves in there. I'm literally going to start like a pre-ferment when I get home. Like I'm, I'm, I'm in it now. Um, It's great. I still suck at cutting the loaves. (laughs) We have the most dull serrated knives known to man. Um, What else? Um, Oh yeah. That indie studio I was talking about. Um, So for the past like uh, on and off for a year, me and then uh, Rena Bweg and Reed Sandland, the two of uh, the three of us, we have uh, been working on this pilot episode for this show called Mandelbrot Hall. It's about a spineless first year art student who's trying to start her, uh, you know, fr- freshman year at college, but uh, things and concepts and people just start to vanish from reality. She's the only person that can tell. Um, it's hilarious, it's terrifying, it's the most fun I've ever had working on something, and I'm really glad that I was able to work on something like that after thesis, because dear God, it really just kills you. You're just like, uh, you're just goo for like six months. Like, um, Sam Baird, who's actually the voice of, uh, one of the, the kids in the bus, just finished his, uh, thesis film, and he's like in the goo stage right now. Um, and it's no joke, um, but... Just keep baking bread, and eventually you'll start drawing cool stuff again. <laughs> and uh, our crowdfund launches in two weeks, and if we make em- enough money, I'll hire all you guys and throw money at you, and we can finally re- get, like, we can get the glory days of the indie in- animation industry back. <laughs> Hashtag indie animation. Support indie animation. Uh, but yeah, it's called Mandelbrot Hall. Two weeks. Yeah, there's lots of cool merch and stuff, too. It's, it's great. So Creek was my third year film. I just finished my thesis like a month ago, and I am currently in the goo stage of life. Um, I'm rediscovering the art of doing nothing and not thinking, which is great. It's great to just not think at all. Um, But something that I've learned about myself is that um, even when I'm doing nothing, I still want to create. I still want to do things, um, see people, live a little, But I also, I want to, you know, I want to animate for fun. No stakes, no deadlines or anything. Just kind of do, you know, pick up little ideas that I had um, along the way of making thesis and stuff like that. Just little things outside of school and everything. Um, If you have been to SVA, you know that junior year and senior year kind of kill you. really badly um, because sophomore or not sophomore year, junior year, your first semester is a group film, second semester is independent film, and then it's straight into thesis. And it was a lot of fun. There were a lot of tears, but it was a lot of fun. 
And, um, but I honestly, the most fun I had like animating that year was when we had like a lip sync assignment and I animated Chopper from One Piece, <laughs> just talking about how he has short term memory loss. And I was like, this is, this is so fun. Like I was just, I was up at like four in the morning on a discord call with my friend and I was just like hearing over and over again, like I have severe short term memory loss just over and over again. And I was like, this is, <laughs> this is actually really fun. I could listen to this all day. Um, and I just, I just want to do stuff like that again. I just want to do like silly stuff like that again. Um, yeah, I just, I think I'm just going to be silly. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Oh man. Uh, I don't even know where to begin because I'm in a similar boat with V. Like I just, Arch and I just graduated as well. Um, and thesis killed both of us, but, um, I think right now we're both just trying to enjoy each other's time, really, just being together finally after being through thesis hell, essentially. <laughs> so, um, like, creatively, I think we're both a little burnt out, but um, what is really kind of like keeping us going a little bit is that we do kind of like still talk about art a lot. We talk about animations, we talk about movies and stuff like that, and just having that connection with someone. And even talking about it with our friends as well outside of school is just so, it's so fun. It's so awesome. Um, what I hope in the future that we can do is definitely work on a little pitch Bible together of um, actually my thesis film, which is called Botanomania, which is focuses on a bunch of flower people at a flower nursery and chaotic stuff happens in there. So hopefully we could do that in the future. But for right now, we're just taking it easy and we're just we're just having fun. We're just talking about animation and talking about animation is so fun. It's so wonderful. <laughs> um, this is my senior uh, thesis film from a year ago, and my goo stage has lasted almost the entirety up until now. Um, so I feel like I'm just sort of starting to get back into figuring out like what I what kind of things I want to do for myself um, in terms of like professionally I've been working with um, a little gaming studio doing some like science games which is so fun because like I never anticipated that I would be animating like cells and stuff like that but like there's a lot of joy in finding like strange like goopy little bodies and like how they move and stuff like that um, so yeah that's like the professional stuff um, like hobby wise and branching our, out artistically wise I've been doing crochet uh, which I highly recommend for all animators because I know we love tiny pointless repetitive motions for <laughs> 10,000 hours <laughs> yeah <laughs> big fan of those um, so yeah just sort of uh, floating along trying to get more inspiration from the world and hopefully exiting goose stage any day now I swear yeah, on that goose stage. Um, yes, I'm also on that goose stage right now because I'm just, I just got done with my third year in SVA. And as V said, it kills you. It genuinely kills you, but um, it's going to be worth it. I'm working on my third year film, almost about to wrap that up. Uh, and I'm trying to find inspiration for my thesis film. So I've been on a binge of Czechoslovakian cartoons and also uh, constantly watching Raggedy Ann and Andy, a musical adventure from Richard Williams that's been like really good for my brain so yeah that's basically what's going on with me all right um let's give one more big hand to these amazing animators thank you so much